Hey everyone, and welcome back. Before we begin today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So in today's video, we're going to be covering statics, equilibrium of rigid bodies, and we are going to be finding some reactions for the beam shown on the screen. And this will be our 23rd part in this particular series. So what we have going on for this beam here is that we have to determine the reactions for the pin which is shown on the left, and the roller, which is shown on the right. So keep in mind that a pin will always be, uh, well, not always be, but can be displayed as a triangle, and a roller can be displayed as a circle reaction. So a pin will have two reactions, one in the X, one in the Y direction for a 2D system. So we can have um, a reaction here, and let's call this point A right here, and we can have a horizontal reaction, which is A sub X, and we will have a vertical reaction, A sub Y, and we will have our roller over here, which we are just gonna call point B, and a roller will only have one reaction, either in the X or the Y, and it all depends upon where this surface is being located along the roller. Since it is horizontal, that means our reaction has to be perpendicular to that surface. So it has to be in the vertical reaction since the surface is horizontal. <clears throat> so this would be a B sub Y reaction. Now, typically with a beam problem like this, your pin's horizontal reaction will be zero because most of the time you will be having or you will have vertical forces being applied to your member. Since there are no horizontal forces here, there is nothing for this horizontal reaction at A to react to, so it will be zero. It will be non-existent for this problem. So that's an easy way to get wet, rid of one of your reactions right away because the only re uh, forces we have being applied to our beam here is a two kip per foot uniform load, 10 kip point load, and a 15 kip point load over here. So we are only having vertical forces being applied. We will only have vertical reactions resisting those. All righty. So we have two that we have to get. So we're going to use, you have to use equilibrium in order to solve for your reactions A, Y, and B, Y. And you only have three equations of equilibrium to solve for for a 2D system, which would be summing forces in the X direction, summing forces in the Y direction, and then summing moments about a point. Well, we really can't use summing forces in the horizontal direction, which is the X direction, because, well, we don't have any applied horizontal forces. So we are left with Fy and finding moments about point. So let's start with our vertical portion here, Fy. So let's take all our upward forces as positive, and all those will have to be equal to zero. So all our downward forces will be negative, all upwards will be positive, and they have to be in equilibrium and tallying up to be zero. Now, when you're working with reactions, just assume a direction of your reaction. If your reaction comes out to be negative, that means you assumed the wrong direction, but the value still is correct. If it comes out to be a positive number for your reaction when you solve for it, that means you did great in the beginning and you assumed the correct direction. No big deal. Well, since all my forces are going downward that are applied, I am going to assume that my reactions are upward in order to cancel with those downward forces. So let's plug in our vertical equation here, working left to right. We will have a sub y going upward assumed, so it's positive, and then 15 downward, it's negative. And then we have 10 kips, which is also downward, so it's negative. And then I'm going to have my two kips per foot uniform load here, and it's also going downward. So I'm going to have two kips per foot, and that is a uniform load, so I have to multiply by the total distance that that load of two kips per foot runs in order to turn it into an equivalent point load because all of these will be point loads. So basically what you do is you take your magnitude, which is two kips per foot, and you multiply by the distance the load is going. So the load is a total of four plus six plus four, so that'd be 14 feet long. And then lastly, I have my B sub Y over here, which is assumed upward, so it is once again positive written in this equation. So typically with the beam problems, as you can see with this FY equation here, is that we have two unknowns in this FY equation, which are both of the reactions, can't solve for it. So usually you come to this FY equation secondly. Firstly, the moment equation will get you one of your reactions. This was just to show you that, well, you get stuck here every time. And whenever you get stuck with one of your equilibrium equations, you just go on to your next one, no big deal. 
Alrighty, so let's move on to our next equilibrium equation here. I'm just going to draw, the, draw this division line here, <clears throat> separating the equations outward. So we are going to sum moments. And what I like to do is I like to sum at the furthest left point for my reactions. And you always want to sum at the reaction point that is furthest left. So my furthest left reaction point right here is at the pin at A. So I'm going to sum moments about A. Once again, everything has to be in equilibrium, canceling out being equal to zero. And I'm going to take counterclockwise as positive. Everything going clockwise will be a negative value. And you can do clockwise as positive if you want to. It just depends on what you want to do. No big deal. Alrighty. So AY goes directly through A. So we don't include it. It has no perpendicular distance to create a moment. So let's go with our 15 kips here first. So 15 kips. And we need a perpendicular distance to A. So on my distance over to A will be four feet. So multiply by four feet here. And the rotation, well, it is going to try to rotate clockwise about point A. If this thing was allowed to swing, it was rotating clockwise about point A. So that'd be negative based upon my sign convention. And then I'm going to repeat the process for the 10 kips. Well, we have 10 kips. Its total distance over to A will be four plus six, which is 10 feet. And then its rotation, it is also trying to rotate clockwise about point A if it was allowed to swing around or rotate around point A. So that's also negative. And then looking at the two kips per foot, well, this would be my equivalent point load. And in order to create moment, I need a point load times a perpendicular distance. So I'm going to copy and paste this two kips per foot times the distance it runs, which is 14 feet. And then I need a perpendicular distance to a. Well, the uniform load, think of it like a rectangle. Now we have our overall area here, which is two kips per foot in height times 14 feet in length. Well, where is my center of that shape? And that is where my equivalent point load will act for the uniform load. Well, for a rectangle and for a uniform load, it is always going to be your distance divided by two. So the length of it divided by two. Well, the length of the uniform load runs 14 feet. So my distance to point A, which is exactly along the edge of that uniform load. So it will be 14 feet over two. Once again, it will also be trying to rotate counterclockwise about point A. So that would be negative. And then lastly, I have my reaction here of B sub Y. B sub Y's total distance to point A is 14 feet, and it will be rotating clockwise about point A, so that will be positive B Y, and that's all I have for moments about point A. Alrighty, so from this moment equation, the only unknown that I have here is B sub Y, so I can just solve for B sub Y using the simplistic equation here, and it pops out to be a positive 25.43 kips. Since it came out to be a positive number, that means my assumed arrow direction at the beginning was the correct one of upwards. And there's one of my reactions. So what I can do is I can come back over here to my original FY equa equation and plug in 25.43 for B sub Y. And then I will pop out A sub Y for my FY equation since now it's the only unknown because B Y is known. And A sub Y pops out to be 27 0.57 kips. It comes out to be a positive number. So once again, my assumed arrow direction of upward was the correct one. Now, one little tidbit here, and it didn't happen in this problem, is that you have to watch out. If B sub Y pops out to be a negative number here, that just means you assume the wrong direction. So it would actually be downward if it was a negative. Well, you have to be careful if you write your FY equation first, because, well, this positive sign right here is assumed that B sub Y is actually upward. So you would either have to change that to a minus sign if it popped out to be downward, or you can plug in a minus 25.3 if it popped out to be a minus. In this case, it did not. It came out to be a positive 25.43. So we can remain that plus sign right there because it is in fact an upward reaction. That's just one thing that did not happen in this problem that you may want to watch out for for other problems. So those are the reactions with a sub x being equal to zero, which some people like to actually write a sub x is zero. That's perfectly fine. So there is one check that you can do before actually finishing off the problem to make sure that you have it 100% correct, is that you want to sum moments at the other reaction point. 
and it should be equal to zero or very close to zero due to rounding purposes. So we summed moments about point A. So let's go ahead and let's sum moments about point B here. So we'll do our check here to make sure we have correct reactions and I'll just do it in a different color. So this would be our check. And we are going to sum moments about point B now, our other reaction, and see if it comes out to be zero. So starting with A sub Y, so we would have A sub Y, which is 27.57 kips, times the total distance to point B, which is 14 feet. It is rotating clockwise about point B. So that would be negative based upon our sign convention. And then we would have our 15, which is kind of cut off right here, and then our 10 kips right here. So we would have 15 kips times its perpendicular distance to B, which is 10 feet. And then we would have our 10 kips, which is only four feet from B. Both of these will be rotating counterclockwise about point B if they are allowed to swing around. So they would be positive. And then we will need to add in the two kips per foot uniform load times the total distance it runs, which is 14 feet, and then multiply by half that distance because the corner of B aligns with the corner of the load. So it'd be 14 feet over two, once again, rotating counterclockwise about B. And this would have to be equal to zero or very close to zero. B sub Y does not show up in this check equation because B sub Y goes directly through B. There is no distance there. Well, does this come out to be zero? Well, not exactly, but look at the value. It comes out to be 0 0.02. That is very, very, very close to zero. And the only reason it is not exactly zero is because these answers are rounded off. If we were to take the exact decimal all the way out, then this would be close to zero. As long as it is relatively close to zero like this, your reactions are correct. It's just rounding that is making the difference. So yes, this proves that we do have the correct reactions here. And that's how you would solve that particular problem, even with a little check there at the end. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you want to see more problems solve this variety, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below, and subscribe to the channel because all that does help us out greatly. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.